muted colours. But then again, autumn really is in full swing now. But anyway, welcome once again, my human friends. I remain your humble host, the multi-sighted mutant Funky M. And while I don't believe that a butterfly flapping its wings can cause a hurricane a thousand miles away, I can see the future, and it's always in flux. That's why I don't risk trying to predict lottery numbers or sports events or even elections. But I can predict with some degree of confidence that in the next few minutes, I'll try to demonstrate how we can use the past to change the future. <laughs> Released in 2014, Days of Future Past picks up the story of Magneto and Professor X in the 1970s, as a new threat to mutant kind has arisen, the Sentinel, which is so deadly that Wolverine must be sent back in time to reassemble the X-Men and stop a war before it starts. Days of Future Past features all new mutants, and the return of some old favourites, and some even older favourites from before the reboot. So come with me, my human friends, as we take a trip through time in both directions to discover our days of future past. It's 2023, and deadly sentinel robots are wiping out the last of mutant kind. Okay, so the way this goes down, yeah? In the 70s, Misty kills Bolivar Trask. <laughs> Middle of the foyer, just like that. And they capture her, study her. Every facet of her being. The skin, blood, bones, all that stuff. And they use that data on the Sentinels. That Sentinel program. Until, 50 years later, they create the perfect Sentinel that's like a giant nuh -uh to any and every mutant power you can think of. And it is scarily effective. Terrifyingly effective. Until mutants... And even the humans that help them, and even humans that might have mutant kids, they all start getting wiped out. Flat scans, man. They scare me. Only Kitty Pride can help, sending the consciousness of a lone survivor into the recent past to warn ahead. The remaining X-Men gather at a stronghold in China. Plan's simple enough. Send a mind back 50 years to their younger body. Stop Mystique from killing Trask. Stop the war before it starts. Step with minds. They're kind of fragile. A few weeks, a month. Not so much damage. 50 years. Your mind's liable to get ripped apart. Except of course Wolvie's with them. And his mind would heal up as fast as it was ripped apart. So yeah, he volunteers. Wolverine goes under and wakes up in the past, and immediately finds himself in a compromising position. Solving this himself, as only Wolverine can, our hero heads to Westchester. So I gave a quick call to the prof, citing research, and he gave me the lowdown. Around about that time, most able men of fighting age were drafted, shipped off to Nam. So there's nothing to do but sit around and feel sorry for yourself. <laughs> Lucky for him, then, that Hank worked the kinks out of his cure. He manages to convince a burned-out Charles Xavier to spring Magneto from the Pentagon. But they'll need help. Our heroes break into the Pentagon, and break out Magneto, which almost goes south. Until it doesn't, a moment later. Let's hear it for Quicksilver, folks. Faster than a speeding bullet, quicker than the human eye. Even I have trouble keeping up with him. And it's off to Paris to stop Mystique from doing a very bad thing. So yeah, Mystique's on the tail of one Bolivar Trask. Mutantologist of sorts, came up with a way to detect mutants, and a mighty big robot to stop them. Which is why she reckons that Trask must die, which is how they catch her, which is what Wolfie was sent back to stop. Which unbelievably goes off without a problem. Until Wolverine spots a very young William Stryker. 
Thankfully, he soon gets his groove back. But in all the confusion, Mystique escapes. Yes, yeah, so there's no keeping a lid on this one. Word even gets back to the then president, Richard Nixon, so I'm told, who decides that the Sentinel program is a go. Great job, Wolfie! The next day, Magneto tries to convince Mystique to fight this battle, but she's having none of it. Back in Westchester, Xavier's powers return to him as his legs start to fade. But a trip to Cerebro doesn't go so well. Wolverine takes a drastic step to convince Xavier to continue. Or rather, Charles Xavier convinces himself to continue. Love this one. Love this scene. It's so serene. And so, Xavier reaches out to Mystique, but her mind's made up. So it's off to Washington DC for our finale. Trask unveils his sentinels, and Xavier stops Mystique from making the same mistake twice. But Magneto isn't too far away, and he's got his own plans. As the VIPs are led to a bunker. A metal bunker. Back in the future, a massive fleet of sentinels attack the compound. Some are destroyed. Some are not. The future is always in flux, as I told you in the introduction, which makes it very difficult to see, or predict with any degree of accuracy. While in the past, Wolverine and Beast try to fight Magneto, which goes about as well as you'd expect. And so, the metal bunker is ripped out, and the future looks bleak for everyone, until Mystique makes the right move and stops this war before it ever started. While the 2023 Logan wakes up in is much brighter. Misty doesn't kill Trask. All of his double dealing is exposed. He's totally discredited and goes to jail. Happy ending for the mutants at least. But anyway, another one down. And yeah, this one also deserves its spot on the mutant fun team. Brian Singer returns to the director's chair with a bold, character-driven piece. The return of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is a joy, even if he's not nearly the gruff berserker he was in previous movies. And once again, McAvoy, Fassbender and j -Law, alongside Nicholas Holt's Beast, give marvellous performances. McAvoy, the wounded and lost addict, spun out on brain-silencing serum to give him some peace. Fassbender the angry Magneto, who fought to save mutant kind and almost caused the war himself. Lawrence as a matured mystique, every inch the international woman of mystery, as driven as Magneto, but without the ego. Of the support, Peter Dinklage is a believable, if diminutive, Bolivar Trask, more the dispassionate scientist than the extinctionist villain. Josh Hellman's striker, however, is more conventional, for what we see of him. And we must of course mention the last hurrah, so far at least, of the X trilogy cast. Stuart and McKellen, Berry, Paige, Ashmore, and Anna Pekin, who even received an alternate release to insert her subplot back into the movie. The plot itself, adapted from the beloved comic book story, retains the essential points. A divided future, a lone survivor going back in time, and a murder that starts a war. And as an adaptation, it works. Where this movie falls down though, is in the amount of anachronistic technology. Were there really that many film cameras in 1973? Would the events have been so well documented? And giant robots? One might buy it in anime, but not for a semi-real world. Then again, in a world of men who can control metal, and women who can shapeshift at will, who's to say what's realistic? And the flow outside of the occasional pops back to 2023, drives as ever towards a set-piece finale, as Singer's X-movies to date have done, except that this one is a little less action-oriented and a little more thoughtful. The debate is a little more polarised here, as Magneto is ever more villainous, and Xavier is slightly more virtuous, but we continue to contemplate. All in all then, this is somewhat sparser on the action, and a fair amount talkier as a blockbuster, 
but Singer acquits himself well. Though, if this had been the end, I wouldn't have been as kind. But thankfully the story goes on for at least one movie more. So this is your humble host, the multi-sided mutant Funky M, inviting you to join me in And anyone who mourns or grieves for him is an idiot that needs to be shot. So thanks for listening to me rant today. Odd that I didn't have anything else for you. I think reality might have shifted while I was talking. But anyway, join me next week as Patreon request time rolls around once again. So long, folks.